Hello and welcome to this video which will explain and demonstrate crossing and corner diagonal design checks in the tower program. The crossing diagonal check has been available in tower for almost its entire existence while the corner diagonal check is newer and was first implemented in version 16.50. Now before I explain how these design checks work let's start by defining and identifying crossing and corner diagonals in the tower program. Crossing diagonals are usually easy to identify as they are simply X brace members as shown in this lattice tower. Now in some cases, crossing diagonals may be modeled with intermediate bracing or redundant members and in some cases they may not. However, the crossing diagonal check will work for both situations. So configurations such as these where redundants are connected to the intersection joint or where redundants are connected along the diagonals can be analyzed using the crossing diagonal check. The concept of the crossing diagonal check is that the compression capacity of a diagonal member may depend on the actual force in the other diagonal member of the pair. Now why is this? Well a diagonal with a large tensile force will provide more support for out of plane buckling at the crossing point than a diagonal with little tension or even a compression force. This is depicted in the sketches in figure 3.1-12 of the tower manual. Here you can see point E is the crossing point of the diagonal pair and the movement of point E is dependent on the magnitude of the force in member BC compared to the compressive force in member AD. Now most design codes recognize this fact and have specific design procedures to calculate the compression capacity of the crossing diagonal members considering this. Corner diagonals are a little different in that the diagonals do not cross each other. The members of a corner diagonal pair must be located on adjacent faces of the tower and also connect at a common point. In addition, the corner diagonal pairs would have redundant bracing members which connect from one diagonal to the other. For example, these leg diagonals could be considered as corner diagonals due to the presence of these redundant bracing members in the oblique face which connect to each diagonal. Now in a real tower, corner diagonals must be connected to each other by redundant bracing members, although in the tower model the corner diagonal check can be performed whether those redundants are included in the model or not. So at this location in the structure, these diagonals could also be treated as corner diagonals as long as there is a bracing member connecting the two diagonals in the real tower even though they are not included in this model. Now conceptually, corner diagonals are similar to crossing diagonals because the amount of support provided by a redundant which connects the diagonal pairs is dependent on the actual force in the other diagonal. If one of the di diagonals has a small tensile force or is in compression, then the redundant can't provide full support to the other diagonal. Now, if there are no redundants connecting the diagonals in the real tower, then the two diagonals will work independently of each other and therefore the crossing diagonal check is not applicable. One other thing to point out is if a crossing or corner diagonal member is broken into segments, like this leg diagonal, the segments need to be collinear, or in other words, they need to be connected on a straight line. And the best way to ensure there are no kinks in the segments is to use secondary joints for the intermediate joints or use the geometry members split command which will split the member into different segments to ensure that the members the segments are actually collinear. Now in order to take advantage of the crossing or corner diagonal design checks in tower in the angle groups table you must designate the group type as either crossing diagonal or corner diagonal as I'm showing here. Once the diagonals are defined you will enter them in the model as you would like any other member with the proper bracing ratios, curve numbers, connection bolts, etc. When you enter the bracing ratios and curve numbers for the member you will determine the appropriate values assuming that the compressed member gets the maximum amount of support from the other crossing diagonal or in the case of a corner diagonal, you will assume the redundants connecting the diagonals are fully effective. Then you must also select the appropriate design code in the Design Checks tab of the General Data dialog box. 
Here you can see a list of the different design codes available for this check. If you do not want to apply the design check, simply select the Fixed option in the pull-down menu. You'll notice that when selecting the ASCE 10 code check, there is a field for a value of RL out. Now RL out is the alternative bracing ratio that will be used when tower detects that the maximum support is not provided by the other diagonal based on the code requirements. If a code you select does not have an entry for RL out, that means that that code has specific requirements that cannot be entered or adjusted by the user. For the user defined option, you must enter a value of RL out and also enter the criteria to determine when maximum support is not provided. Once you've correctly entered the crossing and corner diagonals into the model, you can run the analysis and review the results. For this example, I'm going to focus on this X-brace pair here, which is labeled as X-brace 1, and I'll also focus on these leg corner diagonals down here labeled as diagonal transverse and diagonal longitudinal. Once we've run the analysis, the details of the crossing and corner diagonal checks can be found in the analysis results report in the crossing diagonal check section for each load case of the analysis. So let's review the results for load case number one in this example. Now this table will include both crossing and corner diagonals and lists each diagonal member which did not have full support based on the selected design code and therefore has a reduced compression capacity. Now here we can see the crossing diagonal members X brace 1. For each compression member, the table reports its corresponding tension pair, connection leg, and member forces. It also lists the member compression capacity based on the originally entered bracing ratios and curve numbers, and lastly the new compression capacity based on the adjusted bracing ratio, RL out, and curve number. You'll note that Tower may change the curve number, if necessary, to account for the end connections of the new adjusted unbrace length. Now at the bottom of this table are the corner diagonals in the leg extension. Notice that the RL, RL out value is not 1, but is actually 5. Tower automatically calculates the RL out value for corner diagonals based on the member geometry. In this case, the diagonal was divided into 5 segments in the model to facilitate the bracing members. So when the connecting redundants do not provide sufficient support, the adjusted unbraced length of the diagonal is five times longer than the original segment length. So this report provides all of the details necessary to evaluate the crossing and corner diagonal check results. So how does Tower determine which bracing ratio, RLX or RLY, is replaced by RL out? Well, the program looks at the connected leg of the member. If a member is connected on the long leg, then the short leg will resist out-of-plane buckling, so TAR will substitute RL out for the RLY ratio. For a member connected on the short leg, TAR will substitute RL out for the RLX ratio, since now the strong axis will resist the out-of-plane buckling. And if the connected leg is defined as continuous, then RLX will be replaced by RL out in all situations. One other aspect of the reports I'll mention is if the controlling usage of the angle group is based on the adjusted compression capacity from the crossing or corner diagonal check, it will be noted in the summary report with the word cross in the usage control column as shown here for the 30 foot diagonal group. So you can easily tell if any angle groups are controlled by the crossing and corner diagonal check by simply reviewing the summary report. Then additional details can be found in the analysis results report if necessary. Now I hope this video is helpful in understanding the basics of the crossing and corner diagonal checks in the Tower program. For more information about our software, including additional videos and technical notes, please visit our website at www.powerlinesystems.com. For inquiries regarding our software, price quotations, technical support, or other information, please send us an email using the addresses on the screen. Well, thank you for watching this video and for your interest in our software, the industry standard in overhead design.